जय हिंद एवरीवन वेलकम टू इकोनॉमिक्स क्लास सो डियर स्टूडेंट्स इन प्रीवियस पीरियड वी डिस्कस्ड अबाउट सेक्टर्स ऑन द बेसिस ऑफ इकोनॉमिक एक्टिविटीज हाउ सेक्टर्स आर क्लासिफाइड ऑन द बेसिस ऑफ इकोनॉमिक एक्टिविटीज दैट इज प्राइमरी सेक्टर सेकेंडरी सेक्टर एंड टर्सियरी सेक्टर After that, we discussed about how sectors are compared and how shifts have been taken place between different sectors of economic activities. So, dear students, today we will discuss the other topics of the chapter. So, please be with me for next thirty minutes. So dear students I am going to start different sectors on different conditions so so let's start sectors of indian economy second period and the second part so dear students when we were comparing the different sectors of economy that day i said that at initial stage of development primary sector was most important sector in terms of total production and in terms of total employment after that in 100 years secondary sector became more important and same at the same way in total production and in total number of employment but from past 100 years now tertiary sector which is also known as service sector tertiary sector became most important in developed countries so how tertiary sector became most important sector over the 40 years between 70 1970 to 71 and 2010 to 11 while production in all the three sectors has increased it has increased the most in the tertiary sector yes all sectors have increased but tertiary sector increased the most as a result in the year 2010 11 the tertiary sector has emerged as the largest producing sector in india replacing the primary sector now in india tertiary sector is most important sector so the question is why is tertiary sector becoming so important in india there would be several reasons for that and the first reason is in any country several services such as hospitals educational institutions post and telegraph services police stations courts village administrative offices municipal corporations defense transport banks insurance companies etc are are required in any country these basics these are basic services and these are required this can be considered as basic services so in a developing country like india the government has to take responsibility for the provision of these services so this is the first reason now the second reason is 
the development of agriculture and industry leads to the development of services such as transport trade storage and the like as we have already seen means if agriculture and industry are developing they will ask for more services services like transport trade stores and the like as we have already seen many services they require so greater the development of the primary and secondary sectors more will be the demand for such services as you know that primary and secondary sectors are increasing day by day they are developing day by day so if these two sectors will develop then they will ask for more and more services and if they will ask for services then it will be development of tertiary sector or service sector it was second reason now the third is as income levels rise certain sections of people start demanding many more services like eating out tourism shopping private hospitals private schools professional training etc you know if the income is rising or if the income level rises certain sections of people they ask for more services means they go out in restaurants for eating they visit different places of country they go for shopping for treatment they go to private hospitals for education they send their children to private schools they ask for professional training etc so you can see this change quite sharply in cities especially in cities and especially in big cities so it was the third reason that why tertiary sector becoming more important in developing countries like india then the next reason is over the past decade or so certain new services such as those based on information and communication technology have become important and essential so from last 10 to 15 years new services are required and those are based on information and communication technology and these have become important and very essential so the production of these services has been rising rapidly even you have one chapter in your economics about the rising of information and communication technology so dear students these were the four reasons why indian uh, countries like india tertiary sector is becoming very important so i am just revising one more time the four reasons why these sectors are becoming important so the first reason is in any country several services like hospitals educational institutions post and telegraph services police stations courts village administrative offices municipal corporations defense trans transport banks insurance company etc are required these can be considered as basic services in a developing country like india the government has to take responsibility of this type of services now the second reason is because of development of agriculture and industry even it leads to development of services services like transport 
ट्रेन स्टोरेज एंड मेनी मोर सो ग्रेटर द डेवलपमेंट ऑफ द प्राइमरी एंड सेकेंडरी सेक्टर्स मोर वुड बी द डिमांड फॉर सच सर्विसेज थर्ड रीजन इज एज इनकम लेवल राइज ऑफ पीपल certain sections of people they start demanding more and more services services like eating out tourism shopping private hospitals private schools professional training etc and especially in big cities these are these changes are quite sharp and the fourth reason is over the last over last 10 to 15 years certain new services which are based on information and communication technology they have become very important and essential and the production of these services has been rising rapidly it is rising rapidly so it was the reason why tertiary sector is becoming very important in developing countries like india however you must remember that not all of the service sector is growing equally well yes service sector is going tertiary sector is growing but not all is growing equally well service sector in india employs many different kinds of people at one end there are a limited number of services like highly skilled and educated workers they employ highly skilled and educated workers at the other end there are a very large number of workers engaged in services like small shopkeepers repair persons transport persons etc these people barely manage to earn a living and yet they perform these services because no alternative opportunities for work are available to them they are doing the same work because they don't have alternatives so only a part of this sector is growing well only a part of this sector is growing in importance so you can say that highly educated workers highly skilled workers they are getting job and they are they are getting good living good earning but there are other persons also other services also like small shopkeepers repair persons transport persons and these people barely manage to earn a living and yet they perform these services because no alternative opportunities are available to them so you can say only a part of this sector is growing in importance now the next topic is so now the question is where the most of the people employed we have three sectors primary sector secondary sector and tertiary sector but where are the most people employed in which sector the most people are employed so about india i am talking about india a remarkable fact about india is that while there has been a change in the share of three sectors in gdp a similar shift has not taken place in employment means in gdp the share of three sectors primary secondary and tertiary that is changing but a similar shift has not taken place in employment the share of employment in the three sectors in 1970 71 and 2009 and 10 there is the shift is not same 
so you can say whether it is matter of 1970 or 71 and whether it is 2009 and 10 the primary sector continues to be the largest employer even now means in 70 and 71 the largest employer was the primary sector and even in 2009 and 10 and even in 2019 and 20 the largest employer of india is the primary sector it is largest employer means most of the people are working in this sector so the question is why didn't a similar shift out of primary sector happen in case of employment look production is increasing in all the three sectors but at the same pace they are not providing employment so the question is why didn't a similar shift out of, of primary sector happen in case of employment because not enough jobs were created in the secondary and tertiary sectors yes production is increasing but not enough jobs were created in the secondary and tertiary sectors even though industrial output or the production of goods went up by more than 9 times during the period what i am saying that production went up by more than 9 times in secondary sector but what about employment so employment in the industry went up by around 3 times only so production increased 9 times but employment only 3 times it is about secondary sector what about tertiary sector the same applies to tertiary sector as well while production in the service sector rose by more than 14 times dear children more than 14 times production is increased or it is rose what about employment so employment in the service sector rose around 5 times only so you can understand secondary sector production rose or increased by 9 times employment three times only tertiary sector production rose by 14 times but employment only and only five times so that is the reason even today primary sector is the largest employer in india so as a result more than half of the workers in country are working in the primary sector means more than 50% you can say 55 to 60% workers are working in the primary sector and even in the primary sector mainly in agriculture which produce only a quarter of the gdp means in gdp the sector the share of primary sector is 33% a quarter of the gdp but more than 50% workers are employed in primary sector in contrast to this the secondary and tertiary sectors produce three fourth of the produces whereas they employ less than half of the people means the secondary and tertiary sector its production is three fourth of total produce but they employ less than half of the people does it mean that the workers in agriculture are not producing as much as they could now this question arises because more than 50% workers are employed in primary sector so the workers in agriculture are not producing as much as they could so let's see so as a result 
more than half of the workers in the country are working in the primary sector what i said and even tertiary and secondary sector they produce three fourth of total production which i explained just now but they employ less than half of the people so i am giving you one example take the case of a small farmer lakshmi lakshmi is a small farmer owning about 2 hectares of unirrigated land dependent only on rain and growing crops like jowar and arda so lakshmi is a small farmer she has 2 hectares of unirrigated land land which cannot be irrigated so she depends upon rain only on rain for growing crops and what she produce what she grows so jowar and arda in lakshmi's family there are five members and all five members of her family they work in the plot throughout the year all five members they work in their own plot and throughout the year the question is why why are all five members work in their own plot because they have nowhere else to go for work they don't have any alternative work you will see that everyone is working everyone of lakshmi's family is working none remains idle no one is idle in her family but in actual fact their labor efforts gets divided what all five members of lakshmi's family doing actually they are dividing their labor effort only each one is doing some work but no one is fully employed you understand try to understand each one is working but no one is fully employed so this is the situation of under employment now i'm talking this is the situation of under employment that everyone is working but no one is fully employed and this situation is called under employment where people are apparently working but all of them are meant to work less than their potential all are working but they are working less than their potential so this is a situation of under employment and if we are talking about under employment this kind of under employment is hidden in contrast to someone who does not have a job and is clearly visible as unemployed this type of under employment is hidden in contrast to someone who is not having any job and he is seen clearly or he he is visible clearly as unemployed unemployed and hence it is called disguised unemployed so under employment when all are working but no one is fully employed or you can say they are working less than their potential and this kind of under employment is hidden in contrast to someone who does not have a job and is clearly visible as unemployed so it is called disguised unemployment and there are lots of farmers like lakshmi in india what is the meaning of this this means that even if we remove a lot of people from agricultural sector and provide them with proper work elsewhere agricultural production will not suffer the incomes of the people who take up over the work would increase the total family income 
so if you will take the case of luxury suppose five members are working throughout the year if two will be removed from her family there will be no change in total production means the three members of the family will produce as as which is produced by all five members so if two members will be removed there will be no change in total production now suppose the two persons who are removed will get some other job will earn from some other work what will happen if they will earn from somewhere else from some other job the total family income will increase the family income of lakshmi will increase and it is the case of india there are lots of farmers like lakshmi so we can remove many people from agricultural sector and if we will provide them the work their family income will increase even if we are talking about under employment so this under employment can also happen in other sectors also just i was talking about primary sector but this can also happen in other sectors for example there are thousands of casual workers in the service sector in urban areas who search for daily employment there are thousands of casual workers in urban areas who search for daily employment they are employed as painters plumbers repair persons and other doing odd jobs many of them don't find work every day that is the problem they don't find work every day similarly we see other people of the service sector in the street pushing a cart or selling something where they may spend the whole day they work hard for whole day but earn very little they work whole day but earn very little and why they are doing this job this work they are doing this work because they don't have any better opportunity they don't have any alternative works that's why they are working this job even the earning is very low and work is very hard so so now the question is the main problem which we can see that now there is need of employment so take the case of lakshmi with her 2 hectare plot of unirrigated land what government can do the government can spend some money or banks can provide a loan to construct a well for her family to irrigate the land lakshmi will then be able to irrigate her land and take a second crop that is wheat during the ravi season let us suppose that 1 hectare of wheat can provide employment to two people for 50 days there are many works including sowing watering fertilizer application and harvesting so two more members of the family can be employed in her own field now suppose a new dam is constructed and canals are dug to irrigate many such farms this could lead uh, to a lot of employment if dams are constructed it will lead a lot of employment generation within the agricultural sector and itself reducing the problem of under income so if government will create opportunities like this then many people will be employed and 
it will reduce the problem of underemployment there is another way also another way by which we can tackle this problem is to identify promote and locate industries and services in semi rural area means we can solve this problem to identify promote and locate industries and services in semi rural areas where a large number of people may be employed for example suppose many farmers decide to grow arhar and chickpea pulse crops so setting up a dal mill to procure and process these and sell in the cities is one such example opportunities can be created like this then opening a cold storage could give an opportunity for farmers to store their products if cold storage is open then farmers can store their products like potatoes and onions and sell them when the price is good so it like this opportunities can be created even in villages which is near forest areas i am talking about those villages which is near forest areas we can start honey collection center where farmers can come and sell wild honey it is also possible to set up industries that process vegetables and agricultural produce like potato sweet potato rice wheat tomato fruits which can be sold in outside markets so this will provide employment in industries located in semi rural areas and not necessarily in large urban centers so like this many opportunities can be created even in villages even in semi rural areas even in cities it it is the duty of government to create opportunities Do you know that in India, 46.9 percent of the population belongs to the age group 5 to 29 years, and out of this, only about 52 percent are attending educational institutions. Only 52 percent, and the rest are not. They may be at home. or many of them may be working as child laborers only 52% are attending educational institutions i am talking about the age group of 5 to 29 years if these children are to attend in school suppose rest 48% i am talking about if these children are to attend in school we will require more buildings we will require more teachers and other staff a study conducted by the planning commission estimates that nearly 20 lakh jobs can be created in the education sector alone 20 lakh jobs similarly if we are to improve the health situation we need more and more doctors we need more and more nurses more and more health workers to work in rural areas so these are some ways by which jobs would be created and the problem of under employment can be overcome like this these are the opportunities and it can be created by the government you know every state or region has potential for increasing the income and employment 
for people in their own area what it can be it could be tourism or regional craft industry or new services like it information and information technology some of these would require proper planning and support from the government government has to support for example the same study by the planning commission says that listen it carefully the same study by the planning commission of india says that if tourism as a sector is improved if tourism will be improved as a sector in india every year 35 lakh jobs can be created additional employment can be created in tourism sector only so we have many opportunity government has to work in proper way so dear students today we discussed about why tertiary sector is becoming more important in india that i explained then we explained or we discussed about which sector is largest employer in india and what is the condition of other sectors so dear students we saw that primary sector is largest sector in india and from uh, in 1970 71 primary sector was largest employer in 2009 and 10 primary sector was largest employer and even in 2019 20 primary sector is largest sector and even i uh, we discussed about underemployment we discussed about disguised employment and even we discussed how opportunities can be created so dear students i hope today class was very clear to you people it is my humble request to all my students please read all the topics carefully in your book which is which are explained by me to you till then thank you have a nice day take care